So last time we talked about entanglement, right? Uh, as an example, for example, let's say I have two electrons. Electron one, electron two, they have spin, right? And you consider the whole thing as a system. So what type of system is this? I mean, uh, what is the space that we have? I have two electrons. So what is the space? C4, right? So this is a C4 space. A tree as a whole system. So I have the liberty to prepare it in any state. Okay, I decided to prepare it in this state. Zero, zero, one, one. And then I write C2, right? Thank you, <laughs> typo. Thank you, very good. Which is equal to the tensor product of two C2, right? Just a reminder, okay? Definitely zero, zero, one, one, really is just a symbol. You can call it spin up and spin down. Really doesn't matter. Happy, happy, set, set, right? Do you remember what, this is a special state we just discussed last time. What do we call it? One of the what state? Bell state, one of the bell state. And this state is the actually, if I write it in a column form, it's going to be one, zero, zero, one, which is the phi plus, right? Just one of the, the name of the state. Is that okay? I prepared that. So this is time one, okay? At a certain time, I call it time one. Okay, later maybe I decided to do this. I'm going to transport one of the electron to very far away. So this is electron one, this is electron two. This may be 100 night years away, right? What is night year? It means it takes the night to one, um, one year to travel that distance. So it's really, really far away. They take the night 100 years to travel to another planet, okay? If I do it very carefully, let's say I have that technology. This two is not disturbed by any external system. Then there's still a system, right? Two electrons, they're so close, one micron to each other. I move it a little bit further away, 10 micron. I don't disturb it. There's still one system. One kilometer still a system, one night year still a system, 100 night years still a system. So how do you describe this whole system? What is the wave function, the state of this wave function? Does it change from the origin? No, nothing changed, right? It is still up, up, plus, down, down. And I forgot to emphasize this is an entangled state, right? They are entangled. Remember why it's entanglement? You cannot factorize it into a simple tensor product of two lower space uh, vectors, right? So they're still entangled. Is that okay? Yeah. Say again. Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry. One over square root two. Now, let's say after some time, I decide to ma make a measurement, okay? on the earth, I do a measurement on electron one. What will happen, I try to measure it. What happened to the wave function of electron one when I do measurement? Collapse. It will collapse to what? It depends on how I measure, right? I decided to measure the, in the sigma C, the magnetic field is in the C direction. So it will collapse to what? This is the keyword collapse. Is collapse to what say again? Yes, collapse to one of the paces vector. It collapse to, maybe I don't use arrow because now the arrow has some meaning. Collapse to either up or down, right? I don't know which one, but it will be one of them. Okay, assume. 
it collapses did I spell it wrong C L A P S E right <laughs> Right, and assume it collapses to, let's say, up. That's possible. What happened to the whole system when my first electron collapsed to the up? This is just like the partial measurement we mentioned before. Remember? For the whole system, you only have two possible basis state that is non zero. What are they? Up, up, or down, down. Exactly. So because I either have up, up, or down, down, then electron 2 must also collapse to up without doing any measurement. Is that okay? Yeah. So we only have the whole system, right? This is still a whole system. It's still isolated from the outside world. When I do a measurement, Although I only measure electron 1, the electron 1 is going to collapse to either up or down. But this is still a whole system. It means the system also collapsed to one of the basis states of the system. Right? So it can only collapse to either up, up, or down, down. Because I don't have up, down, and down, up components. Yes. Right? Because if it's not entangled, I might have an up-down component. Then when I collapse to up, I have a combination of up and down for electron 2. But now I'm very sure when this is up, the electron 100 light years away also becomes up. That is pretty terrible, right? It looks like my, what I'm doing on the Earth instantaneously affects what happened uh, 100 light years away. Looks like signal is traveling faster than the speed of light. Now, but although you think in this way, it is not that case. You are not able to transfer useful information to uh, the person in 100 light years away because you never know what you are going to collapse to. Because even you don't know the information, it's just that when it collapse to up, you know it becomes up. But you are not transferring any information you intended to transfer to that person 109 years away. But still, this is not a spooky action at a distance. So there's no violation on general relativity yet. Okay, also, although, although it looks nice. Is that okay? Any question? Yeah, I think so. Uh, because how? Because you measure and then you just give a call to that guy. You say, uh, now what do you get? Hmm? Yeah, you, there are other guys to measure. You need to worry just because this is you're, you're just trying to verify, right? So it's okay to, to ask other guy to measure. And then if you will your set and have some control their set, you'll see them across joint pairs, they're matching, but they're still gonna have a 50% chance of being each across the hundred if that makes sense. Well, I guess uh, what I'm confused about is if one guy collapses by doing the measurement. You're blind that you don't have to do the measurement on the other electron. It should also collapse. Yeah, and you also collapse, yeah. And how does that verify? Because you have to make a measurement. So yeah, yeah right. then you measure, you see it's always collapsed up. Every time you collapse up, it always up, always start. Every time you are up, it's always up. So you measure If you want to verify, of course, right? Yeah, if you don't verify, how to, can you know it really do that? Okay. This is not the spooky part. So now Einstein 
Polosky and Rosen, they wrote a paper. They say, uh, there's problem with quantum mechanics, okay? So let's see what is the problem that they are talking about. But we present in a very simple way, but you will be able at least ah, kind of agree uh, uh, with them. Now, I just repeat what we say. We have two person A and then B, right? And then we prepare a state, which is like what we say just now, zero, zero, one, one, which is an entangled state, okay? And then I transfer this electron, I transfer one of the electron to B. Now it doesn't matter, it is really far away now. Right? We don't care about whether this is because uh, the, uh, trans uh, the uh, speed of light is not the main point here. Now, if A measure at zero one basis, okay? Then it will collapse. We already say that. Again, spelling. To either zero or one, right? The first electron. The first electron, right? We just say that. I just repeat what I just said. Is that okay? So what does it mean? Then I'm 100% certain, I'm very certain, right? B, right? And then let, let's say assume zero. Uh, assume, right? Assume collapse. I keep spelling it wrong. To zero. If it collapses zero, what is the state of B, electron at B, when A collapses to zero? Zero. I am 100% certain that B is zero. Okay? Because of the quantum mechanics theory, right? But now, this is first step. B, try to do something. B decided not to measure in zero one basis, it measures the second electron in the plus minus basis, which is the eigenvector of sigma x. Okay? It has the freedom to do that, right? You send me the electron. I did not touch it. You measure it and you call me, say that, hey, my collapse to zero. You must be at zero states based on quantum mechanics. I don't touch it. I just don't, I decided to measure it with the electric magnetic field in the horizontal direction. When I measure it, it will collapse to eigen plus or minus basis, which is the eigenvector of the sigma x. Is that okay? Then what will happen if I do this measurement? Second electron will, when I do this measurement, based on quantum mechanics, what happened? It will collapse to what? Plus or any of them, right? Collapses to either plus or minus, right? But I say assume, it doesn't matter. Maybe it collapses to plus. Okay, then what does it mean? I'm 100% certain that my electron B, second electron, is at plus. Okay, I'm very sure, we have just done the measurement. It collapsed to the plus, right? But that guy, my, the friend I trust, who is super good in quantum mechanics, told me, your electron is at minus, at zero state, based on this, right? Then what does it mean? Then it means I know whether it is at plus or zero with 100% certainty at the same time. But we just learned about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that we cannot measure them accurately at the same time. Right? If I know it in the basis, uh, zero and one uh, state basis, 
hundred percent, then I only have fifty percent. I mean, I have no information about the plus minus basis, and vice versa. But this experiment let me know that my electron is hundred percent in the zero and also hundred percent at plus. Exactly. So then it means what? It violates Heisenberg. I spell it wrong again. Uncertainty principle, which is a principle in quantum mechanics, right? One of the fundamental principles. Then what can you say? So they say, conclusion, based on what they say, either quantum mechanics is wrong. Either it is wrong or quantum mechanics is incomplete. There are some hidden variable. For example, when you measure it in the zero state, there must be something to prevent me to measure in the plus minus state. But this hidden variable has not been discovered yet. So based on my reading, I know uh, Einstein spent the last, I don't know how many years, trying to figure out what's wrong with quantum mechanics, but he failed. Okay, yeah. So I'm trying to sketch this experiment in my head. Uh, so you have two electrons that are intact, so you move them apart, and then first electron, you put the magnetic field in the Z direction, and you make a measurement. Yes. And then you call the other guy and say, make a measurement, but he just somehow happens to have his magnetic field in the X direction. Yeah. So he measures plus, yeah. the first electron measures zero. Yeah. So basically, the theory tell you that I call him, I got zero, yours must be zero because the theory is correct. And then he decided not to measure in zero one basis, measure in the sigma, uh, in the x direction. And then he said, well, no, it is 100% plus. So now he has 100% certainty that this electron is at zero and also at plus. But this violates the uncertainty principle. So quantum mechanics is either wrong or incomplete. Now this is interesting, right? So this is very difficult. Uh, it's uh, out of my ability. But there's something called Bell's inequality. There is something that um, you cannot explain by classical statistics. Now people already proved that in experiment that Bell's equality is correct. Okay, so you do have this spook, spooky, spooky Asher night stuff. But however, that proof is not 100% either because one can always say that there's a finite probability that your experiment is wrong. Uh, experiment is not perfect. They can always come up with this. Yeah, that's what I understand. But as people keep improving their experiment set up, and also try to prove it from different aspects, they keep proving that it is correct, Bell's inequality, that quantum mechanics is cor correct, that you cannot explain by classical physics. So the confidence in this is higher and higher. Okay? That's all I can tell you. So I guess what you're saying is, number one, your proposition number one, quantum mechanics is wrong. People don't believe that. Conclusion of that there's something unknown about this process. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. Both of them are, are wrong. <laughs> I mean, we all, all we should say we believe that we don't need to worry about both of them. It is correct, and the result is like what it is. No, it's ignoring the fact that it violates.